unlock this tiki with the keys to your imagination. You're crossing into another dimension, a dimension of sound, a dimension of sight, a dimension of mind. You're moving across a land of shadows and substance, ideas and things. You've just crossed into creepy tales from the teepee of terror. Our guest today is Joseph Natawa. Here's your tobacco. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so please share a spooky story with us. There was this man that wanted to transform himself into a cannibal because he could. He knew the, uh, you could say he knew the dark forces, you know, he knew the dark side of the Nihil Itapsinu in the cruel way of knowing. And so there he, he was at this house, and there's, a, if you can imagine, a shallow grave that he dug out, and then it's all crossed, you know, with pieces of wood, you know, all across. And he caged himself underneath there, and he was murmuring something. Basically, maybe a mantra just to transform himself into this devastating being. And so, before he started to transform, they called my, uh, at that time, my grandmother's father, which would be my great-great-grandfather, so they, they called him. said, that's Tampito Te. This uh, being is going to, what do you call that, shape shift. Hurry up! So they called him and he hurried as much as possible, but he was too late. By the time he got there, I say Kwiskim, but already this man had turned himself into a cannibal, devastating creature. And he never let those kind of people loose. The powerful people back then were Sinog, Notugwek, old women and old men. They were the powerful people. So he saw this cannibal and he said, Don't do anything and don't go anywhere. Scots just come with me. So this this being, you know, listened, because he knew the power of this medicine person. So he listened and he uh, got out of that shallow grave and came out, you know, and he started walking. And he had him kind of tied up in a rope and walked out. And then it's a long ways back. So they decided just to rest. And so Niti Gapimsene, he said, you lay over there, he said to this cannibal. And I'll be over here and I'll, I'll watch out for you. So. My grand, great-grandfather fell asleep right there on the ground and there was a fire. All of a sudden, something woke him up and there was this cannibal right next to him and he was holding a knife. Oh, Sigatete! And he just spoke. It's the force of his voice just sent this cannibal back to his senses and it was just, my grandfather, great-grandfather picked up, grabbed that knife and, and he went back and lay down. Next morning, they walked. They walked back to the house, to his house, eh? and he caged him up in his house. He put him in a little cage, you know, inside the house. Like they nugget that, you know, because he's dangerous. So he can't be out loose, you know. These kind of beings, you have to do some kind of ceremony to remove that that uh, devastating transformational being that was entered into his body. And he watched him for about a couple of weeks, and he was getting tired. Scottape, he said, sit still. I'm going to go and get somebody, my brother, wash over you. So off he goes out the door. But meanwhile, somebody came to, you know, came to the door and knocked. Whoever answered was uh, very smooth talking. And it was the candle. Ah, how beat the gray. Beat the gray knows him. Come in, my grandchild. He had this kind of a voice, you know, like just a really seductive voice. She was just all of a sudden in a trance, you know, and she started walking and she had her little baby as she walked in there. She just completely lost herself. And she was walking in there and she went it towards that cage, you know, and all of a sudden my grandfather, great-grandfather, came into the door and saw this woman with the baby. Oh, get away from there. Oh, all of a sudden his arm came out and it had all these claws, you know, and it just reached out to that little baby and was going to just rip it, you know, rip it apart, you know, just 
and she just came to her senses and she, you know, leaned back and the baby got a little scratch and instantly that baby died. It just died. Oh, it's terrible. And this old man came in there. That's not good what you did. That's terrible. But we know who you are. We'll fix you. A few more days passed and uh, they called the preacher. And then they also called a medicine person to come and do a exorcism. They needed two of those medicine people, a preacher and a medicine man from Nihiawa, Nihio Tapsuno, and Cree way of knowing. So they brought them together and they said, we need to do a healing. This man is, he's had a being that's dangerous in our community that entered his body. So they had this ceremony, they started singing, they were like, ah, yeah, 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 oh, hey, 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 hey. and they sang, you know, and all of a sudden something was happening inside there. There was some kind of a, you know, rattles were flying around and things were just moving about. And then it was over. As soon as it was over, this man came back to normalcy. He became normal again. And he came out of that lodge, you know, and they said, what happened? You know, what happened? And then they said, oh, this is what you did to yourself. You know, you became a dangerous individual, cannibal. You're scary, scaring the living daylights. You even, you even murdered a child. Who could come and you got to pay for that. And so the holy man came as well and just did a prayer and a blessing for him, that preacher there. And that's the story my grandmother told me as I was about to drive in pitch black, you know, to get back to my place. And I'm just sitting there thinking there might be somebody behind me, you know. Old people are such tricksters, you know, my grandmother. <laughs> but that's the story I'll share for today. You know, we're, we live in our world of spiritual beings, right, that we visit. I'm Joseph Natauho, and this is my grandmother's story, Flora Gladue, from Flying Dust. I hope that story doesn't scare you too much, but it's a bit of a teaching in there as well.